a whistler. And I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now, the Whistler's strange story, Borrowed Future. The late afternoon sun, a red ball of fire, lingered on the rim of the distant mountain, and long shadows were creeping across the valley floor as Phil Hodges stood at the window of the construction company office, watched the approach of the car along the narrow, dusty roadway leading up to the newly erected, almost completed dam. He had no way of knowing, of course, that because of that car, its occupant, a new and never-to-be-forgotten chapter in his life was about to be written. Hiya, fella. Well, what do you know? Jim. Jim Welch. How are you, Phil? Well, <laughs> say, this is a surprise. What what brings you around? Business, my boy. Stop by your rooming house over at Willow Pass. A doll told me I'd find you here, and oh, boy, what a doll. Yeah, that'll be Claudia. Hey, what's she doing in a hick town like Willow Pass? Don't tell me she runs a boarding house. Her mother does. Mrs. Hackett. Uh, w- w- wouldn't care to put in a good word for an old pal, would you? With Mrs. Hackett? Sure. <laughs> the doll, Buster. Never mind Mrs. Hackett. Hey, lay off. That's my territory. Oh. <laughs> so that's it, huh? I figured. You want to look around? See some of the old gang? Yeah, yeah. Later. Is Pop Dunnigan still your night watchman? Yeah, he sure is. That boss of yours around? No, Mr. Grayson's up in Portland on business. Won't be back for another week. Uh, uh, speaking of business, uh, can we go inside and talk? Sure. Come on. How you been doing, Jim? Ah, uh, so-so. I knew the going would be a little rough when I left this outfit. Started in business for myself, but I've managed. Yeah, I'm glad to hear it. Made a lot of contacts, too, Phil. One of them's about to pay off big. Good, good. Yeah, I got a bid in on a job in Nevada. A big one. Chance I've been waiting for. I'm sure I can land it, only I'm going to have to get some heavy equipment. Swell. Remember old man Faraday? Yeah, sure. He's still in business? Yeah, the old warhouse is going to retire, though, and... I can pick up a lot of his stuff for a song. Mm-hmm. How much? 20000 <laughs> You're whistling quite a tune, pal. I can manage about half of it. I'm looking for a guy who can put up the rest. That's why I came to see you, Phil. Me? <laughs> You're kidding. Well, I'm sure I can get the financing elsewhere, but I wanted to give you a crack at it first. Well, thanks, Jim. I know you felt for a long time wanting to get out on your own. Remember how we used to talk about it in the old days? Yeah, just pipe dreams. For me, at least. Doesn't have to be. I'm offering you a chance to come in with me. A partnership. A partnership? Yeah, be your own boss. I'm going to set up an office in San Francisco want you to take over. Look, Phil, no more long road trips, staying in crummy hotels, cheap food, hick town. Oh, stop, you're killing me. Listen, Jim, you know I'd go for it in a minute, only I just don't have the money. Well, couldn't you borrow it? Uh, how about that uncle of yours? Your old Uncle Fred. <laughs> Remember the last time I hit in for a few bucks? Well, sure, but that was to pay off a gambling debt. You've been a pretty steady boy since then. This time, it's different. It's a chance for you to go into business for yourself. Yeah. You know, Jim, maybe you're right. He might come through. How soon would you need the money? Well, I'm on my way over to the coast. Should be passing back this way in a couple of days. All right, Jim. I'll see what I can do. It's the opportunity you've long been waiting for, isn't it, Phil? And more important, it would mean the end of the dull, boring field trip. Instead, you'd have a comfortable, air-cooled office in the city. A fine apartment, good food, and good time. It's what you've always wanted, isn't it? That evening, you're at the boarding house, pacing back and forth along the front porch. Look, 
Phil. It's getting late. What are we going to the dance? Everybody's there by now. I told you, Claudia, as soon as I get that phone call. Mm, fine thing. Maybe I should have gone with Johnny when he asked me. Okay, maybe you should have. Or with Ralph, or Frank. Oh, or... darling, I really didn't mean that. I know there are a dozen guys in this town who'd fall all over themselves for a chance to take you out. Small-time Romeo's not for me. You are. <laughs> See what I mean? Yeah. Oh, I'm... I, I'm sorry I barked at you like that, baby. Well, you're just silly about something, that's all. Phone call have anything to do with it? Has everything to do with it. Mm-hmm. Look, I wasn't going to keep this as a surprise, but... Well, the call I'm expecting is from my uncle in San Francisco. Yeah. I phoned him earlier today, offered him a proposition. He said he'd think it over and let me know tonight. Oh, so that's it. It's going to mean a lot to both of us, baby. You'd like to get out of this hick town, wouldn't you? Would I? You can have all the things you've always wanted. An apartment in the city, smart clothes, nightclubs. Uh-oh, that could be Uncle Fred now. Wait here, baby, and keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> Oh, darling, what did he... We're in, baby. The old boy is going to let me have the money. He's sending me a check in the morning. You're on your way now, aren't you, Phil? Yes, the realization of a dream. And the future looks bright for you. For two days, you wait eagerly for your uncle's check. But it doesn't come. And then on the morning of the third day, Jim Welch returns from his trip to the coast and stops at the boarding house. Well, look, Phil, maybe the old gent changed his mind. No, no, he gave me his word, Jim. I know Uncle Fred. He'll send it. Okay, but I've got to get up to Medford and close that deal with Faraday. Look, I've been trying to get my uncle on the phone, but there's no answer. Can you give me till this afternoon? Sure. Sure, Phil. I'll check it at the hotel. I could use some shut eye. Trip to the coast pushed me. Call me when you get some word, huh? I will, Jim. Morning, darling. Hello, baby. I heard you talking to somebody. Yeah, the fellow I was telling you about. Huh? Jim Welch. Oh. He asked for the money? Yeah. The mailman's been here and gone. No check. Oh, Phil. That was such a wonderful chance for both of us. Yeah. But there's nothing to do now but forget about it. But you can't forget about it. You can't let an opportunity like this slip by. The check's been delayed, that's all. Probably over at the main post office in Twin Falls right now. Yeah, I, I thought of that. I got to run over there anyway. I'll ask. Well, that's right. You have to drive over to the bank there, don't you? Yeah. Pick up the company payroll. Phil, when are you leaving for Twin Falls? In a few minutes. Why? Oh, thought I'd ride over with you. Well, sure. I just feel like going for a drive, and besides, I... Have an idea I'd like to talk over with you. Hello? Jim, this is Phil. Look, I'm phoning from Twin Falls. Leaving right away. I should be back in Willow Pass by 2 this afternoon. Wait for me. Yeah, you get the check from me. No, no, but I've made some other uh, uh, arrangements. I I have the money for you, Jim. All of it. Ten grand. In cash. It's done, isn't it, Phil? You've uh, borrowed $10,000 of the company payroll money. Turned it over to your new partner, Jim Welch. It was a risky move, but you're certain everything will work out. As soon as your uncle's check arrives, and you're certain it will, you'll replace the money you took from the Grayson Construction Company and be in the clear. But that evening, as you're having dinner with Claudia... Look, Phil... I thought this was supposed to be a celebration. Why so glum? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Something on your mind? Yeah. The payroll money. That's it, isn't it? I've been thinking about it all day. I wish I hadn't used it. What? I started regretting it the moment Jim left town. I shouldn't have touched it. Well, why not? Because it's wrong, that's why. Take it easy. You want the whole world to know. Mm, okay, okay. 
Well, what are you worried about? You're going to pay it back, aren't you? Well, your uncle's check arrived. Yes. So you've only borrowed Grayson's 10000 for a little while, that's all. It still isn't right. Well, maybe not, but it's done. Yeah, yeah, it's done. Oh, look, darling. Maybe if I told Grayson... What? Explain why I did it. What's wrong with you? Are you out of your mind? What good would that do? I could make him understand. Oh, sure. Get a great big laugh over it. So you've been dipping into the till, huh? Tut, tut, my boy. Help yourself anytime. Feel free. Oh, come off it, Phil. Anyway, you can't tell Grayson. He's in Portland. So he'll be back in a few days. And by that time, this whole thing will be cleared up. Your uncle's check will surely arrive tomorrow. You will replace Grayson's money, and that'll be the end of it. Uh, I, I hope it will be. Oh, come on, Phil. Snap out of it. Things will work out. You'll see. As soon as you get your uncle's check, you'll feel different about all of it. Yes, perhaps Claudia is right again, Phil. But the following morning, you're shocked to discover there's still no check in the mail. Something's wrong, Phil. Very wrong. And when you reach the construction company office, you're in for another shock. Hello, Phil. (laughs) Mr. Grayson. I I thought you were still up in Portland. Ah, well, I finished my affairs a little earlier than I expected. Say, I phoned you yesterday, but the boys said that you'd gone over to Twin Falls. Pick up the payroll money. Uh, Yes, that's right. Well, how's everything going? Fine. Just just fine, sir. Oh, good. I think we'll be out of here by the end of this week, Phil. Uh, I'm sure of it. (laughs) Excellent. Right on schedule, huh? You really know how to run an outfit, my boy. Thanks. Well, I think I'll run up to the dam, have a look around. See you later, eh, Phil? Sure, Mr. Grayson. Sure. You stand there trembling, don't you, Phil? Watch Grayson as he walks out of the office, starts up toward the dam. Only the two of you have access to the company safe. And if, for some reason or other, he has occasion to look into the safe, find the $10,000 missing, you're going to be in for real trouble, aren't you? Quickly, you reach for the telephone. Put in another call to your uncle in San Francisco. You're relieved when finally you hear his housekeeper's voice at the other end of the line. Hello, Mr. Hodges' residence. Miss Kelly, this is Phil. Oh, Mr. Philip, I'm so glad you called. Look, I've been trying to reach Uncle Fred for days. There's been no answer. I know. I've been away for a few days visiting my sister. Rushed back as soon as I heard about the accident. Accident? Your uncle, Mr. Philip. He was in an automobile crash three nights ago. What? happened the same night he talked with you on the telephone, about an hour later. Oh, no. No. Oh, now you needn't worry, Mr. Phillips. Though his condition's serious, the doctor says you'll pull through. Of course, they're not allowing visitors yet. All right, Phil, all right. So it's my fault. I didn't say that, Claudia. I just wish I hadn't listened to you, that's all. I'm in a real jam. Well, I would have suggested you use the payroll money. Only you were so certain your uncle would send that check. Sure, sure. But how was I to know he'd get himself banged up in a car crash? I don't suppose there's a chance he did mail that check. Before the accident, I mean. If he had, I'd have gotten it by now. No, let's face it, Claudia, the check isn't coming. Well, what are you going to do? I don't know. I just don't know. But we just can't spend the rest of the night driving around going nowhere. Maybe we should be going somewhere. What do you mean? Just keep going as far away from Willow Pass as possible. Run away? What else can I do? Tomorrow is payday. What's Grayson going to say and do when he opens the safe and finds $10,000 missing? I've got to leave. Well, then you'll have to leave alone, Phil. You're a nice, great, big, handsome boy. I like you. But no running from the law for me. Hey, wait a minute, Phil. This pal of yours, Jim Welch, he has the money you gave him, hasn't he? Sure, but he's up in Medford. Well, call him up. Tell him the whole deal's off. You want the money back. We can drive up there in a few hours and pick it up. Don't you think I'd follow that? I don't know where he's staying. Besides, he's probably closed the deal by now. Maybe, maybe not. Doesn't Jim have any friends around there? People he might be staying with? Oh, uh, I don't know. We were on a job there a couple of years ago, and... Hey, wait a minute. You think of someone? Yeah. 
One of the boys in our outfit married a gal in Medford. Stayed on when we finished the job. Ben Adams. Yeah. Jim's sure to look him up. Okay, so it's worth a try. Well, there's a signal station up ahead. You can call him from there. <laughs> Hello? Jim, this is Phil. Well, hiya, boy. Hey, how'd you know where to reach me? I just talked with Ben Adams. He told me where you were staying. Look, did you close the deal with Faraday? Yep, an hour ago. All signed and sealed. We'll get it unsealed. I want out, Jim. I've changed my mind. Wait, wait a minute. What's wrong? I can't explain it now. I want that money back, Jim. All of it. Hold on, Phil. It's too late. I told you I closed the deal with Faraday. And I told you I gotta have the money back. That's impossible. I can't do that. You got to! Tell Faraday the deal's off. Tell him anything. Look... I don't know what this is all about, but I'm sorry, Phil. The, the deal is set, closed, and there isn't a thing I can do. Uh, Phil? Hello? Hello, Phil, do you, you hear me? Phil, do you... What's on your mind, Phil? You've been pretty quiet since we left that gas station back there. I've been thinking things out, Claudia. I gotta find a way to gain time to get that money from my uncle. And I think I figured it out. <laughs> Funny. Hadn't occurred to me before. You better tell me all about it. I'll tell you all the details later. Oh, your mother is still up. Yeah. You run on in the house like a good girl and keep her company, huh? Well, aren't you coming in? No. I have a an errand to do. But Phil, what are you up to? Never mind. Phil, tell me. All right. It's very simple. Somebody is going to rob the safe at the office. What? I'll set the whole thing up. Make it look like a robber took that money. But what about the night watchman, Pop Dunnigan? He'll be around, won't he? Probably in the office. So how do you handle him? Oh, I have to get him out of the way. Oh, now, wait a minute. Oh, don't worry. I'm not going to hurt him. I'll slip up from behind, tap him easy, just knock him out for a little while. Think you can get away with it? i got to take the chance. It'll give me the time I need to repay that money. I don't follow. In a week or so, I'll drive down to San Francisco, get the check from Uncle Fred. I'll cash it there and bring the money back. And then what? You intend to simply return the money to the safe? Look, that one. No, I'll figure something else. Arrange for the money to be found somewhere. A, a locker at the bus depot, maybe. An anonymous phone call to the police. It'll work, Claudia. You no, know, it sounds crazy enough to. You're really worried about what you've done, aren't you, Phil? Taking Grayson's money. Yes. I wish I hadn't done it. But he'll get it back every cent. And I'll be out of this mess. Okay. I hope you know what you're doing. Ten minutes later, you park your car in the shadows not far from the construction company office and hurry toward the small building. You press back against the wall. Tip over a gas tin to attract Pop's attention. There's only one thing that worries you, Phil. Pop Dunnigan is an old man, and you must be careful not to hit him too hard. A thousand confused thoughts race through your mind. Your knees are trembling, your heart pounds furiously as Pop comes out of the office. Who's that? Your hand tightens around the wrench. But suddenly you're unable to move, to think, to do anything but stare. And then Pop turns towards you. Hello, Pop. Oh, hello, Mr. Hodgins. What you doing around here this time of night? I, uh... I had an important matter to attend to. Uh, forgot it this afternoon when I left. What you got in your hand? Oh, well, this... Uh, a wrench. I, I, I found it on the ground over there. Somebody's getting kind of careless. I'll take it, Mr. Hodgins. Yeah. Here you are. You couldn't do it, could you, Phil? At the last split second, you discovered you couldn't bring the wrench down on the back of the old man's head. Inside the office, you sit at your desk, pretend to work, cast sidelong glances at Pop, sitting across the room reading his paper. You've still time to carry out your plan, but it would mean hitting old Pop. And you just can't do it, can you, Phil? Putting in some overtime, Mr. Hodges. Uh, what, what time is it? Almost 2.30. All through? Yeah. Through? Yeah, Pop. 
I'm all through. Finished. Good night. No refill, mister? Yeah, yeah, sure. I'm sure glad you dropped in. Don't get many customers this time of night. You uh, heading on a trip? No. Coming back, maybe? I uh, just sort of been driving around, that's all. Oh. You got problems. A problem. Well, things have a way of working themselves out. This problem. A woman, maybe? She's part of it. Just walk away from it, pal. There are some other things you can't walk away from. You just have to face the music. Is that what you're going to do? Yeah. Yeah, that's... That's what I'm going to do. Face the music. It's all over, isn't it, Phil? You've made up your mind to that. You've decided to return to Willow Pass. Tell Mr. Grayson everything. How you, um borrowed the $10,000 from the company safe and gave it to Jim Welch. It's early morning when you arrive at the construction office. The work crews are making ready to move on up the hill to the dam. Oh, good morning, Phil. Morning, Mr. Grayson. Hey, there was a phone call for you a few minutes ago. A woman who runs the boarding house, uh, Mrs. Hackett. Oh? Mm-hmm. Wanted to know if you were here. She seemed concerned because you hadn't been to the boarding house all night. Well, <coughs> guess you better get the money out of the safe, Phil. Starting the payroll, huh? Uh, Mr. Grayson, I, I'd like to talk to you. Yeah, sure, sure, but uh, look, can it wait five or ten minutes? I want to catch Thorgerson's crew before they go on up to the dam. But, Mr. Grayson... Ah, no, I, I won't be long. Yes, hello? That you, Phil? Jim? I'm on my way back to San Francisco. Just wanted to make sure you got the package I left for you. The Package? Yeah, I stopped at your rooming house around 6 this morning, but you hadn't been in all night, so I took it up to your office. Gave it to Pop Dunnigan. He said he'd put it in your desk. Yeah. Yeah, there's a package here. But you sounded so worried on the phone last night, and, well, I got to thinking, so... I went back to Faraday and made another deal. <laughs> what do you know, Phil? The old war horse isn't retiring after all. He's my new partner. You mean... Wait a minute. The money. Yeah, your ten grand. You wanted it back, didn't you? Oh, I sure did. Hey, what was all the panic about? I'll I'll tell you some other time, Jim. Right now, I, I have to make up the payroll. <laughs> Featured in tonight's story were Bill Foreman as the whistler... Les Tremaine, Gene Bates, Hi Aberback, Bill Boucher, and Britt Wood. The Whistler, directed by George W. Allen, with music by Wilbur Hatch, is produced under the supervision of Ed Bloodworth and transmitted overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. This evening's story was by Adrian Jean Doe. The Whistler was entirely fictional, and all characters portrayed on The Whistler are also fictional. Any similarity of names or resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Whistler has just brought you another of his strange tales. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service.